It's the most wonderful time of the year. It's the greatest time of the year. Christmas. Christmas has everything you could possibly need. Santa, snow, presents, Zod. Everything is wonderful. And of course, let's not forget about the Christmas specials. The Christmas specials are a time-honored tradition. We sit around the TV and watch as many as we can. It's absolutely fantastic. But then there's that one Christmas special that sneaks in and spoils everything. The one Christmas special that makes the rest of the Christmas specials feel bad about themselves. That particular Christmas special is Rover Dangerfield. Well, okay, it's not entirely Christmas related, but a lot of it does take place around Christmas time, and I guess it's trying to relate some Christmas themes. But before we talk about this, it's probably best to talk about the person it was based on, Rodney Dangerfield. No respect, no respect. No respect. The late comedian was definitely known as a stand-up stand-up. Most comedians get rid of the idea of just going up and telling one-liners, but Dangerfield was one of the few stand-ups who kept it going. And to be fair, they were pretty funny. Hey, my wife, she never went for me. Well, the first time I called her up, she told me, come on over, there's nobody home. I went over, there was nobody home. <laughs> they play around so young today, very young. You couldn't tell you they got birth control pills shaped like Fred Flintstone, you know? Really? <laughs> That's what he was known for, his one-liners. And let's be honest, that's what he was best at. In terms of his movie experience, he did have two films that were big hits, Back to School and Caddyshack. These movies knew how to use his one-liners to the film's advantage. This movie does not. It's a painful little train wreck that's entirely based on just one joke. Ronnie Dangerfield is a dog. That's it. There's literally nothing else to it. And if you think it's like other movies where you can say the actor was just a product of the Hollywood system, think again. Rodney Dangerfield had everything to do with this movie. He was the producer, handled the screenplay, came up with the idea. He even wrote the story with his pal Harold Ramis. How do you think that process went? Hey, Harold, I got this great idea for a kid's movie. It's me as a dog. I think that would be extraordinarily dangerous. Glad you like it. Bye. <laughs> so, the big question this movie asks is, can Rodney Dangerfield do anything in a kid's movie outside of telling one-liners? Well, not to give away the ending, but no. This is Rover Dangerfield. So we open on Las Vegas, where our four-legged friend lives. And right from the very beginning, you can see why this movie isn't going to work. I love your pom-poms. Oh, I've heard that before. Oh, pardon me. Bones, bones, I forgot you're a poodle. Hey, first joke I made and I don't even get it. Oh. So as you can see, the dog looks exactly like Rodney Dangerfield, which I don't think is a good thing. I wouldn't mind too much, except that half the time it looks like his eyes are just staring off into space. Like they're animating a dead wooden puppet or something. Hey, look who's in town. Carmine's canines. I used to work with them when I was a pup. Hey, so do I stand upright or walk on all fours? I wrote this movie and even I'm confused. Hey, gang, how you doing? Oh, hey, hi. Where's Flappy? Carmine fired him. He couldn't remember the routines. Well, I saw that coming. Flappy was dumb. How dumb was he? He used to walk backwards and wag his head. <laughs> Hilarious. So he goes. I mean, dumb. <laughs> when Carmine taught him how to sit, he forgot how to stand. Good one. Then he goes. When Carmine paper trained him, that was something. He went right in a paper. The only trouble is, Carmine was reading it. <laughs> yeah, um, how many more one liners are there in this movie? Oh, God! Well, I suppose it could be worse. I mean, it is a kid's film. I suppose they could be singing a song right now. No, 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 no. It's a dog's life and I love it. Las Vegas is the place for me. Ah, 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 ah. Someday, this is the place to throw your cares away. Well, it's a dog's life and I love it. If All in favor of skipping this song, say f off. off. Thank you. So Rover goes backstage to visit his master. What a place, honey. Huh, Big place, big place. You know how many people work here? G I don't know, a joke. One out of four. <laughs> so Rover's master is a showgirl named Connie, which I gotta say is a pretty risky business. Doesn't she know that everybody got AIDS and Oh, Rover, you wouldn't forget my birthday. <gasps> hey, what's happening, girls? Gee, I wonder who the villain is. Out of all the people in this room, I guess it could be anybody. No, but seriously, I think it's showgirl number four. Actually, it turns out it's her boyfriend, Rocky. What a shock. As Rover watches him partake in a shady deal. 
Let's see the cash. It's all here. Relax. <laughs> it's another one of his phony deals. Hmm. The cops! It's a setup. Let's get out of here! Wow, that is the most paranoid gang of mobsters I've ever seen. Two other deals go like that? I mean, they could be in the middle of a meeting and one guy could be like... It's a setup. Let's get out of here! Wait, it's just a dog! A stupid dog! This was your last chance, small time. You'll curse the day you ever messed with the easily excitable gang. Uh, Rover! Rover, you're mine! I'm gonna get you! So Rover returns home only to find that Connie is leaving for a few weeks and Rocky Bow is going to be looking after him. Rocky will take care of you. Rocky? Yeah, I'll take care of him. This, of course, begs the question, why the f doesn't he just run? I mean, the movie shows he has plenty of time. Or could he not think up of a clever one-liner before he could do it? <laughs> so he tosses Rover in a bag and proceeds to throw him over the Hoover Dam. So what's happening here? So what am I, dirty laundry? I'll miss you, Rover. Hey, hot damn, I'm rolling down the river. Looks like I'm all wet, I... not the ending, but trust me, you'll wish it was. So before all lame jokes can go to heaven, Rover is picked up by a couple of fishermen. Before they can take him to the pound, he jumps out of the car and starts exploring. Oh, I'm sorry, starts saying well liners to the crowd of people that isn't there! No hotels, no people, no fire hydrants. Hey, slow down, will you? You're eating like pigs. Thanks for making a total stranger feel like a total stranger. Please tell me he gets destroyed by some large piece of farm equipment. Go for the equipment! Whoa! Ah! Ah! Okay, okay, again, that's not the real ending, but instead we get, you're not gonna believe this, a one-liner! In fact, I'm not even gonna tell you the one-liner. No, I want you to just look at this scenario and tell me the worst possible joke that you can think up. Good luck. Let's look at your answers. No, there's no point in looking at the answers because I know you all got the same answer. So, everybody in the whole world say on the count of three what exactly the joke is. One, two, three. I'm, I'm turning, turning into, into a corn dog. dog. You, movie. You. So he's picked up by a farmer and his son who want to adopt him. The son is played by the late famous voice actress Dana Hill, who you may recognize as Max from Goof Troop or Jerry from the Tom and Jerry movie. Needless to say, she still keeps her voice at half Dropped. Dad, stop the machine! We picked up a dog! His name is Rover. Well, at least that's what it says on the Nostalgia Critic tie. Well, we can't keep him. We got too many dogs as it is. Keep me, Dad! Ugh, what am I doing? Oh, toe, toe. Oh, this guy's been around. You know, they make it clear that people can't understand what the dog is saying. So, with that in mind, why are the father and son just staring at each other while the dog has an epileptic seizure? All right, Danny, you can keep him. Hooray! Hey, kid, take it easy, will you? So Rover is introduced to all the incredibly colorful characters on the farm. That is, they wouldn't be colorful if they got any screen time, but nope, we get to hear Rodney recite even more one-liners. Okay, you cotton balls. Yeah, I want to pay my doctor with a hog. Your little Bo Peep days are over. What's your sign? Well, at least he doesn't tell us the really bad unfunny jokes. No, 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 no. He sings those. I'd give up a bone for you. Okay, I don't need to hear about the bones he's giving to other dogs. 